Well, some of the crowd are on the pitch. I know the, uh, with experience that Mr Capello will get the team right. Um, it should be spicy. We've got Yebder and Hassan, uh, or Hassan and um, Nadir, forgive me, in, uh, in the change room on a daily basis telling me how good Algeria are and how much they're going to beat England by. So that should be interesting. Yeah, they can. Um, but yeah, will they, I think, is an open-ended question because I think there are teams that are, that are better prepared to win, a, win at the World Cup with history of winning the World Cup recently. Um, and I think that puts them in a, in a better, better position um, um, than, than us. Um, but equally, you know, when you look at our team, um, we've got a fantastic team. Um, can we keep everybody fit? That's you know, very important. I think we'll probably go quarters or semis. It's, uh, there's not much in it, the top five countries in the world, so uh, it will be tight. But um, for me, I think Spain and Brazil uh, just have a little bit too, too much in England. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at England in that group and see how they play in that in that in that group, and if we if we win, just let's say one nil, you one nils and that sort of thing. But we're playing well. We we're looking solid at the bike, creating chances. Then I'll say yeah, we, we we stand a bit of a chance. But if we if we're just scraping through, you know, not not doing all that well and not looking as a team and looking a bit individual and you know, uh, then it's going to be difficult for us. Yeah, I think it'll be amazing. I think it'll be good for English fans and Australian fans. Uh, we've got a friendly rivalry with the Ashes and obviously rugby and that. And uh, I think this will be the bit of added spice to, to the sports competitions um, between England and Australia. Definitely Australia, 100%. You don't dream about that. You don't dream about representing your country playing at Wembley against the Germans in the World Cup final scoring three is something you don't dare dream about. Italia 90 with England I think was a, was a really you know, amazing occasion when we got to the semi-finals and then obviously your own involvement in, in the tournament gives you your own personal memories. Probably Brazil, um, Brazil of sort of 82, 78, um, Zico, Adair, Socrates, all that mob, so all, all the proper players. Yeah. 1990 where Ireland reached the last eight uh, and when you think of a nation that's you know, Population-wise, is between 45 million. You know, to reach the last day, I think, is a fantastic achievement. The first time you'd ever qualified for a World Cup into the bargain. The game against uh, uh, Argentina, where it was a, it was a real battle out there. They, they were so fierce and so strong. They wanted to try and put us off our game, uh, but we stuck at it. And uh, little Nobby Stars was probably the smallest and. He, he got stuck into their captain, Ratin, and uh, he, he was in the top set, Ratin, I think. We, we got to the semi-final, um, which is the best we've done from England, and we're width of a post with Chrissy Waddle away from the final. Um, you know, that's, that's got to be, you know, the, the, the major highlight for me. One thing springs to mind, which is when uh, Dan Petrescu scored against us, um, um, playing for Romania. And we played very well, but we lost the game. And uh, Dan was my uh, my sort of responsibility to a certain extent. And um, he scored in the last couple of minutes of the game to beat us 2-1. So I got a lot of stick for that. Probably John Aldridge, a good pal of mine, when he was effing and blinding at the uh, lines and when they wouldn't let him on. 1986 World Cup. I played in the game against Paraguay, and we won that game 3-0. And I thought we were going to play in the next game against Argentina. And Bobby Robson dropped me for that game. And that was the hand of God game. Uh, and I always thought, what if they lost the game 2-1? If I'd have played, I think we'd have lost that 4-1. <laughs>